All right, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the version of the code from the 5th and the 6th. Well, today's work. I'm going to pull up the version from the 5th and the 6th. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to show you what I did here, what we ended up at the end of the day, which was on the 5th, and then I'll show you what I did slightly different afterward. I already put today's date on it, so don't worry, it's today's date. But I'm going to put these side by side. You can remember, right click a tab, move to other view, so you can see it side by side. And Notepad++ does have a plugin that will allow us to compare our code. We have to add, we have to add it, however. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I've got both the fifth and the sixth code open. And slightly different things. Um, line uh, 25 and 24. So we ended up with document.getElementById.classform.reset. That was going to reset the form uh, after we successfully added a, a new document or there was an error or whatever. So that's standard JavaScript code. Yeah, if you can send the pink sheet to the first row, please. Not the stickers, just the sign-in sheet. Um, so that's standard JavaScript. And I was trying to remember, what's the jQuery version, which is what we ended up right here. It was very similar to what I was trying to accomplish, which is still in the comment, but I had to look it up and see, oh, okay, I needed to add index 0. Why? It's just that there is no standard dot .reset method in jQuery, it's a JavaScript method, and it looks like the trick is to reference the first ver uh, the first element with that ID, which turns it into JavaScript. In short, trust me, I got it on Stack Overflow. So uh, this was the, the version of JavaScript, and it worked, but then remember, jQuery is about write uh, less, do more. So saving a few lines of code, a few bytes, which then add up. Uh, we've got the, the jQuery selector, so we've selected that ID. We have to uh, reference the first version, the 0th version, dot reset. And that's equivalent to line 25 right here. So then what I wanted to do was also use the jQuery equivalents inside of the add class function create that variable, this variable, this variable, and get it from the screen. That's what I was trying to do, and I couldn't remember the exact, the exact code. Here's the code. Dot val. It's a method. So I was trying to get, we, were, we have the classic, J, the classic JavaScript way, document, dot yellow, get element by ID. Which ID? CRN field, dot value. Give me the value of that input field, put it into this variable. That's, the, that's what we ended up with. What I wanted to do instead, and it's in the new version, is this. Create the variable again, put the dollar symbol simply to denote that it's a jQuery version of a variable, and then get the val from the input field. You notice that's, of course, much shorter than document.getElementById, CRI field. You just say dollar uh, and then the ID name. But the trick was .val. That's what I was trying to remember instead of .value. Question. Oh, sorry. I, I, was, I apologize for this, but how is that different from the previous one? Is it just the updated version, and that's it? This is, uh, yes, this is plain old JavaScript, uh -huh. and then this one needs the jQuery library. So this one needs to, this file needs to have the jQuery up on the head okay. for it to work. But um, I, I guess, how is that different from the other one? Uh, it, less... Is it still grabbing it? Um, yes, it's it's doing the same end result, uh -huh. but now it's uh, write less, do more. Oh, okay. So we're writing a few bytes less, so if we add all of this up, let's say it's 60 bytes. Here this looks like it's less than half. Okay. So every little byte helps, and then it's also cleaner code, less to maintain. Because remember, we might have the problem, I misspelled document, get element by ID, put in a capital I, capital D. Right. So all of that is basically compressed down to a dollar symbol. Okay. But then value doesn't work. We need dot val method function. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So should we copy one of your files 
Yes. Um, everyone that came in a little bit late, all you need to do is, is if you go back to the network folder, there's uh -huh. going to be a new version with, with the date of the 6th. Copy the whole folder with, with uh, November 6th, and that's where we're taking it from. You can copy from the file to the file, but just copy the whole folder. The one with the date of the 6th. So it's, it's pouch example. Is that it? Pouch example, Victor 2011 So another little difference then is because um, in the old version we created these variables called class. So we used, we created the variable cat, cl class here and we then put it to the console log just to see it and then we actually put it into the, uh, the document. Okay, that's what we did last time. What I tweaked it very slightly is that now it's got it in the syntax of the jQuery variable. It's got the dollar symbol. That's the only difference there. Dollar symbol, dollar symbol, dollar symbol. Same as before. But now it's in the syntax. If I had kept it, I could have kept it the same. Class ERN. It doesn't matter. But, for example, the recommended book and other tutorials say that when we create a variable from a jQuery query, we, um, we can preface it with a dollar symbol just to show this was a jQuery variable. And then just wherever we need to reference it, we need to remember the dollar symbol. And I asked the, I asked the, one of the guys that works on PouchDB, just for a little clarification here, uh, and he answered me, and uh, when we created, on line 34, we created a class, a variable called a class, which stores all of the class details. Remember we did this, we needed underscore ID, that's the required one, and then as many other fields, so to speak, this is what we did. I asked him, wait a minute, if this is JSON format, why aren't we using quotes around the key or the value. The value makes sense, why not? I'll explain. But the key, why didn't we use quotes here? Remember when we learned the basic JSON stuff and when we looked it up on JSON.org, they always had it in quotes. And I asked him, is it right or wrong to add the quotes? And he said, pouch assumes it's going to be a string, so you can omit the quotes or not. I don't feel so good about that. I want to be obvious. So in my version of it, I just put it in quotes. Same thing, but here it's obvious, like what we learned on day one, that on a JSON object we have quotes for the keys and quotes if we need them for the values. Why didn't I put quotes on these? They're variables. They're variables. I want to take what's inside of the variables and put it into title. If I put it in quotes, it would literally put dollar class title as a title instead of the title of the class, Android 2. So in this case, not in quotes, because it would have literally, it would have put a string, it would have put that exact quoted text as this field, title. You don't want that. I do want these as, as quoted as strings, because these are names in the database. These are fields in the database. And then each one of these changes, because it's a variable, every time the person adds it to the um, input box. Just slight variations of what we did previously, just to kind of upgrade it a little bit. Uh, because as I said, I've been teaching this class a few years. We we go through this we go through this stuff and it works. And the version that I gave you in the um, in the network folder, what we ended up with works. But I wanted to go back and just kind of play with it also because sometimes that's fun. So. In short, if you came in a little late, just get the get the one with the sixth, the folder with the sixth, and that's where we're starting. Oh, and one more thing over here, uh, also just for fun, uh, error, error checking. Um, there's a block here that we didn't talk about, which I'll explain, which is pretty easy to to figure out on the on the on the date of the sixth version 6, we've got a section that says switch. Switch is a cool way to check errors. 
it's sort of it's a conditional statement in that we've had if there's a condition something happens a conditional statement we've seen before is if else and that's usually only checking one thing if it's true or false here we can check multiple things did this happen or did this happen or did this happen or did this happen I'm not sure why it's called switch and case but they called it switch and the way it works is on switch line 48 we're checking for something and the possibilities remember we could get an error if we're trying to add something to the database either we get an error or a positive result that's the if is still there and the else is still there so if we get a positive result put it in the database clear the fields and on screen say class added to deal with else I have it I mean uh, to deal with error I have it in else and inside of else if you see it starts on 44 and it still ends on 64 but inside of else this is when we're doing let's clear the fields because something went wrong and then let's check what is the status? There's going to be a few different status codes that Pouch will give us back. In case that we get error 409, in the console we're going to output the whole scary version of the message, and then on screen to the user we're going to say that CRN already exists. That's what 409 means. You're trying to reuse an ID that already existed. So that scary message is what we'll get as a developer, but for the user it'll say that CRN already exists and then break. So I can have any number of commands in a case. Do this, and then this, and then this, and then this, break. We're done. Don't do anything else. There could be a case that the error status is 412. If it's 412, put it in the console, and on screen say, please fill out all fields. This error is about, you. technically, you didn't add an ID. 412 is you didn't add an ID. So we might want to tweak that one a little bit. But for the user, it'll say, please fill all fields. In the console, it'll tell us that. Great, we're done. Don't do anything else. There could also be a case where there is an error status 500. In 500, this one's a little different. Uh, we want to see inside of the console error.reason. Uh, how do I know that? I looked it up. And then on screen, fail to open index CD or even private mode. So weird things will happen if you're in private mode, apparently. So that'll display on screen. Break. And if there's any other one that I didn't cover here, there might be a 404. If there's any other one, oh, that's incomplete, actually. We'll fix that, line 61. That should go to the console. It doesn't say console. Oops. But that goes on screen then and just display that error. That's the newest part of that I added because we had very simply if else whatever error happens just show it on screen which might not be the most user friendly error message it's going to give you a JSON string um, about these error messages and such so I, I looked it up just to kind of make it a little bit more user friendly and I used decided to use a switch checking for this possible error, that possible error, that possible error. If I didn't cover an error, here's the default response. And that displays on screen and then the file is the rest, is the same as before. So now that I caught this here, uh, let's look on, on line 61 and let's fix that. This is supposed to go to the console. So line 61 should say console.log, parentheses, semicolon. Again, if you came in a little bit late, you need to go to the network folder and get the folder called November 6th. I just this is the this is the latest version of the code. I tweaked it a little bit over the weekend. Um, so that's the latest version in the network. Go ahead and run it in Chrome. Bring up your console. Run it in Chrome. Bring up the console. Remember, press F12. Bring up the console. We have deep freeze, so everything was deleted. 
object, there's no count, there's nothing in the database, you've got deep freeze. But if it was on a real app, a real device, it would save it from day to day, it would be persistent. We've got the special case that we've got deep freeze, so it didn't. I'm just going to put something into the, the database. I'm going to say CRN123, class English1, instructor Smith, add class. Just confirming that it's working as before. There's console log ID, console log uh, title, and console log instructor. And then uh, the console log dot uh, result, console log um, message dot result. So it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't behave differently. Internally, the code's a little cleaner, a little more robust, uh, but it should behave properly. So let's look at these errors. What if you put nothing in here and try to add a class? Please fill out all fields. Console. That's message. That's, uh, that's, that's error.message right there. ID is required. And these are empty because you didn't fill anything in there. I just put in class 123. Let me put in class 123 again. English 2 with Instructor Smith. Add class. That TRN already exists. I'm trying to put in a class with an ID that already exists. The, the IDs, the CRNs, are the unique identifier. And then so the result is here. This is the three fields. And then document update conflict. That's what internally Pouch tells us, but we made it say this nice user error right here. I just hit case 409. All right, so this is where we're taking it from last time. Any questions so far? It's kind of funny, you know, I mean, between the, um, the first time we entered one, two, three, right? And then it, uh, it took it, right? Because uh, it, mm -hmm. it was new. Out there it was empty, so it, it, it put in empty. But then the second time, then it put in the ID, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't put in the ID, it was, it, uh, output of the ID was required for the part, right? Ah, uh, I'm sorry, line 53. Mm -hmm. You see index HTML line 53, the, the, the first 53. Mm -hmm. um, up here somewhere? Yes, up here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... Uh, uh, ID is... Okay. Exactly. And the second time, uh, the conflict gave me the cost number, right? Because I tried to use 1, 2, 3 again. Right, right. But, but see, the thing is that and it is a space between the... Those spaces? The, yeah. The, these spaces are because I didn't fill anything in there, and it showed me oh, that these are empty. That's what I didn't, I Watch this. Yeah. If I don't put in an ID, and I do put something here, English 2, Jones, add class, it still says please fill out all fields because it's the ID is the important one. And so it shows nothing in the ID. Those are the two fields. So technically, I should craft a slightly better error message that says, don't forget the CRN, or something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, so remind me here now, everyone. Uh, I'm in Chrome. I'm seeing some console output. But where do I go again to actually see the contents of the database? Resources. Resources. Let's go up on the top tab here in Chrome and let's go to resources and where is it at here? Index DB. Index DB. And there it is, underscore pouch, underscore STCE classes. And we'll look at it by sequence. So I've got one thing in the database so far. If it's not updated, remember to click the little refresh button at the bottom. This little refresh down here. I've got one thing in the database so far. I'm just going to add something else very quickly, just gibberish for the moment. Add class. It doesn't update automatically. You have to click the refresh. We've got two things. 
Now, we need to sometimes test things with an empty database, and as we keep working, we keep adding and adding to the database. Let me show you a command here so that we can delete, so we can clear out the database. We can do it two ways, writing it in JavaScript or writing it in the web browser, because we can write JavaScript commands in the web browser, back on console here. We're getting all this console output, but it's asking for input right here. Did you ever notice that's that's blinking? You can write j valid JavaScript in your web browser, press enter, and get JavaScript. And as you're typing, it might um, you know, it might uh, help you fill in, when you're typing here, it'll help you fill in your code. Anyway, we get JavaScript here. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to empty the database. I want to delete the database. I've got two things in it so far. You may have something in it or not, but sometimes we need to start with an empty database. So here's a command here. I don't have it in any document at the moment for you, sorry, but take notes here. Uh, you want to be in the console. You switch from resources to console, where it asks you for input right there, and start typing IND. It's going to suggest, oh, do you mean indexed DB? So you want to tab. So we're going to type the indexed DB command out. It's capital D, capital D, dot. It's okay, here's the different things that we can do with indexed DBs. Delete database. So if you select delete database, then it says which database? Because we can have many of them. So here we have to then write open close parentheses, open close quotes, and then the name of the database. Now all PouchDB databases have the prefix underscore pouch underscore, and then the name of the database that we invented. Which is what? SDCE classes. DB name, SDCE classes. So our code here will continue. SDCE classes, capital C, and then end of end of statement. So indexed db dot delete database which one underscore pouch underscore stc classes in quotes enter <coughs> press enter then you get a little feedback uh, don't worry if there's a bunch of nulls okay ready state done so the point of that is that now if I refresh my web browser I should have an empty database Reload my web browser and I should have an empty database. Sometimes we need to test our app with an empty database. When someone installs the app for the very first time, it's an empty database. So we need to check a few things about that. And as we work and work and work, we're adding stuff to the database. So if we would need to delete it, that would be a, a command. I'm getting some errors here. Did anyone get any errors? Which I've gotten? Uh, I think it'll just say OK. Um, well, did, did you refresh your web browser and then did console look normal? I'm getting failed to open. I'm getting failed to open DB. Are you in private browsing mode? Weird. What was the, what was the, 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 the 
right here. Oh, pouch, okay. Underscore pouch, right. underscore the name of your database. So for some reason, I'm getting an error message that it now thinks I'm in private browsing mode. Let me see if I can fix that. Okay, sometimes this is weird. I've seen it before. I had opened my index file from the 5th and the index file from the 6th, and it was confused about that. So I closed the one from the 5th, and now it, it's okay. What I, be, what I mean by okay now is if I refresh, I, it should show that I've got zero, uh, zero count. So we won't need to do it all the time. Let me pull that up again. But uh, make a note of this. This is how you delete a database if you need to delete a database for testing and such. Indexed db dot delete database and then the name of the database. We have a command also. I believe it's db dot destroy in 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 JavaScript. We would have to write that. Well, I think we can write it here too. But in any way, in any event, this is another way to do it. db.destroy, etc. Anyway, um, okay. What we want to do is um, we've we've got the ability to have the user add classes and such, and we're able to see it in the uh, in the console but we want that to appear on screen. We've got a button that says show classes. We want these to show up for the user. And at the moment it's just that the button works. So we want to be able to press the button to show the classes. So I'm going to add a few classes here since my database is empty. You can put gibberish or whatever you want. I'll put CRN123, English1, Smith, and then 124, English, two joins. Just make something up. It doesn't have to be real. English, three. So I've got three items in my database. I've got three documents in my database. And what I want to do is pull um, pull stuff out of the database. Let's do this. Um, I'm still here in Chrome, and as I said, we can type JavaScript in here, and it'll execute it. Uh, just to show you something here. From the console, I want to pull out something from the database to display it. So the pouch db.com documentation has various ways for us to do that. Question? Me? Yes. You just deleted the database, so how are you entering info? You should be able to just refresh and add and add data again. Just just put in but I mean, like, I kind of have same question. But I mean, like, you don't have to create a database again in order to uh, to have, you know, because we already deleted the database. We did delete the database, but when you refresh, it should run all your code again from the beginning. And at the beginning, we've got right here new database. So it should recreate it. Try. Uh, 
At least I try closing your web browser completely and then running. So yeah, we did delete it, but every time we run the code, it creates it right away, line 21. Did that seem to work? I'm still getting the errors. Is that normal in red? Possibly. Let me take a quick look. So what we're going to do is, um, yeah, maybe it's not necessary to always delete stuff, but it's fine to say that. Um, Did anyone else have this issue that they never resolved itself about the database? All right, so that was a little weird, but uh, it looked like that if you delete the database twice and then refresh, then it seems to wake it up or something. So in any event, go ahead and add some data back to the database. Just add three items to the database so that we have something that you have to work with. Go ahead and add some data to the database. And the pouchdb.com website then, of course, is our manual that explains everything what we need to do, how to add a document, how to retrieve one, and all of that. So here, just to show you this, in the... I'm in Chrome. I'm in the console. It's waiting for input. We're going to type db.get. Chrome is pretty smart, but it's figuring out... Um, 
do you need get? Do you need get attachment? Do you see as we're typing, it's going to suggest commands. Close, destroy, etc. But we want db.get. Open close parentheses. And what this get command basically is, let's get a document from the database. So this is going to uh, be asking for an ID. Um, I added class 123, 124, and 125. If you added something different, hopefully you remember what you added. Uh, but I added class 123. So in quotes, I'm going to get class 123. That's the CRM. That's the ID. .get works with the ID of the document you saved. And we're going to do something in uh, jQuery that's known as chaining. We're going to uh, use one command and then another command sort of connected at the same time. And that's simply just dot and then the command. Then. We're going to get this database record and then we're going to do something with it. This could have been separated on two lines but I'm going to keep it on one line and just attach it together with a dot and this is chaining or chaining commands. Inside of then, this will look a little familiar. Function, open close parentheses, open close curly brace. We've seen this sort of syntax a little different. We had on click function and then uh, commands. This is similar in that vein, except it's a little simpler, just dot then. We're going to say, let's get that document, and then we're going to do something. We just have to use that syntax. Inside of the curly braces, we'll say good old alert, and we'll say, oh, one, one more thing, let me back up here. Function doc. Um, we're getting this document and we're giving it to this function to do something with it. So we're getting this document named 123, and then we're using it in this function, so we put doc in here, alert, doc, dot, title. This should be a little familiar when we were talking about the JSON stuff on the very first week where we had a social dot um, URL. Remember that? We were getting the URL value of the social document. What else did we have? We had uh, description. We had social dot description. We were getting the description out of that social network. Here, we're, we're going to get the title of this document, one, two, three and then semicolon at the end, and then press enter. Pop-up that says English 1. So that's the pop-up, which is the alert. It's displaying the title of the document. Which document? Document 1, 2, 3. And you get something that says promise. Just ignore that for the moment. Try that again. Remember, you can also press up here, like when we were in command prompt. Up will bring you back to back your last command. You did, um, if you added other documents, I added one, two, five. So let's say, give me one, two, five, and this time give me the instructor. Now, we called it inst. Why? Because when we created, in the document, when we created a class, it's made out of ID, title, inst. So I'm not making up those values there. I'm getting them from what we invented. If we made a brand new one, comma, description, with a description, then we can say in the code here, doc dot description, however I called it, description. 
That value is what we invented when we created a class. That variable that holds all of the data of one class had ID, title, inst. So this time I'm saying, what was that instructor again for class 125? Enter. Oh yeah, Kajiwara. So there you go. This is we're now in, just simply in the console, we're pulling data out of the database. A particular ID and a particular field. So a particular item in the database with its you know, sub data. DB.get. DB is the name of our database. .get is the pouch command. And then we also display it on screen alert. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? Well, that's fine for pulling one thing out of the database and that we know its, its ID, but I want to display all, all of the records in the database all of the documents in the database. That'll need a little bit more setup. So we'll get back to Notepad. This was just temporary. This didn't write any code, any permanent code. This is just a sandbox, just like when we were editing the CSS of stuff in the elements. This console here is just temporary. So we want to write, we want to go back to Notepad. Online um, 23, we've got the function clear fields. Line 26, we've got the function add class. I want to create a new function to show the classes. So we'll go to line 68. Line 68 function show classes open close parentheses open close curly brace we're gonna define what show classes does we've got a button waiting for us show classes on click eventually show classes So we've created a new function called show classes. Let's actually then attach it, so to speak, to the button, line 72. The button is waiting to be clicked on. There's a button on screen. When we click it, let's run the show class function. So let's remove that alert, remove that whole alert, all the text of the alert, and just keep the curly braces. And we will replace that with show classes. So line 72. We've got function, curly braces, delete everything in the curly braces. And we'll just simply say show classes. Now the button at least will know that when we click on show classes, it'll, it'll execute the show classes function. So line 69 here, we'll say db dot, we're dealing with the database, and there's a pouch command. We saw that if we do get, it'll get us one document. We want all the documents in the database. So there's a command called all docs, open close parentheses. This is a pouch db command, a method of the object, a command of the database. The pouch people invented it, basically. So, all docs. Give me all the documents in the database. But, by default, sometimes these things are not that user-friendly looking, right? Maybe for us as developers, we can handle it, but for the user, it's going to look weird. Especially because it's going to be in JSON format. So, the all docs 
um, the all docs command has a few uh, a few options. Um, inside the curly inside the parentheses, we'll write curly braces. Curly braces. What does that mean again? JSON. In this case, when curly braces all by themselves, it's JSON. So we're going to add some options to the all docs command in a JSON format. Why? Because that's how Pouch expects it. And so we've got kind of, that's the idea, but this is expecting some commands for the, some parameters for the all docs uh, method. And so we're going to say, in quotes, include underscore docs space colon true because by default what it would show you wouldn't actually be the documents in the database which is weird so we have to tell it include the documents don't just show me for example like the revisions and such show me the documents so this is in JSON format key value we're saying include docs true yes show me the all docs comma I also want, in quotes, ascending, space, colon, true. I want them in ascending order, alphabetical order, A to Z, uh, 0 to, to 9. Use a little bit of JSON being used to give options or parameters, settings, to the all docs method. Include all the docs, comma, and to send the data, alphabetize it. So at this point it would say, okay, great, here's all the data. But again, it would still look weird. So we have to further add a little bit more. Uh, the all docs, the all docs command has options and then comma a function, a callback function. What's What's the result? So I'm going to break this up. This is going to be a long line. So I'm going to put a comma right after that JSON string and press enter, and then we'll write function. Open close parentheses. Open curly base. Close curly base. So notice we see this. We see this syntax a lot. An anonymous function and then stuff. Same thing here. On click anonymous function. When we were in the console a moment ago in Chrome, we did something similar. Then, and then function and alert. So that's a callback function syntax. Most pouch commands, remember, we have either an error or a result. So same thing here. We, we need to define this function is either going to get an error or a result in the, in the parentheses. Error, result. And then uh, just to see what it looks like if we're on the right track, inside of the parentheses, uh, inside of the curly braces here, we'll say alert result dot rows. That's basically every row in the database. It still won't look pretty. Let's see if this works so far. Go ahead and save it. We should have some data in the database. Click on the second button, which will execute show classes, and it'll try to show you some data. It might look really weird, but at least I want to get a pop-up. We'll see if we're on the right track.
check if mine's working. I'm just going to show classes. Object, object, object. Don't I have three things in my database? I do. Let me add one more thing. Just anything here. Add class. Show class. Object, 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 object. It sees that I've got four objects, but again, it's not going to show it to us in the prettiest way, is it? But we're getting there. Does it work so far like this? Anyone need a little help? Three objects. <laughs> I had three objects too, and then I added another one, and then I had four. So go ahead and add another ob and add another class. Oh, I another. Yeah, it's not going to. Yeah, that's we've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, we've got six. Function, right? You call the function that they use. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, that needs to be changed instead of the latest. I mean, the new. Okay, you might not have the latest version of the web browser. Uh, refresh your web browser. Um, I don't actually want to. I think I want to refresh it, but how do you refresh it again? Uh, just uh, maybe yeah. the refresh. Oh, okay. Then, uh, then next slide. Yes. That's what we want to see. How do we get the, the description? Because uh, we don't really have the description here. We have a. That's right. That was just an example. That was an example. When we were creating it, if we added also comma and description, and we added a new box here, description, then it would. Capture description and put it into the into the object. So basically, the uh, that would be the the dot dot id dot the title dot yeah. dot the in or any exactly. other description. Yes, those are the fields yes. of the of the a class, which is the which is the object. So here, show classes on so a different line, and I didn't see it break. Uh, can we look at your your current? Does it break someplace? Let me see. 
No, you do it right. We we move the function to its own line. Absolutely correct. It looks like we do. Well, we're still on the same line. You're 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 still on the same line. Show classes. Well, that's that's. But the, the, the word was sort of off, so. Oh, I, I didn't notice that. Uh, well, well, also because, because my screen. Well, my yeah. screen is also smaller. Yeah, no, so you've got a nice wide screen, and that, that would be a quick one. Yeah, I'm going to shrink it. Shrink it. Yeah. Plus, I also have the, uh, plus I also have the, um, the console over there. So uh, yeah. That's for our body. <laughs> okay, so this is um, simply showing us doc, uh, showing us object. So at least it sees I have four objects. I have four records in the database we need to take all of that data that it's giving us and then actually uh, showing it a uh, show it a little bit nicer so this was just to, to show is show classes working it is so we're not going to have an alert here go ahead and remove that that was just to to see if our code was okay so far and instead uh, we're going to display the data on screen in a nice table. A table is very useful because it has rows and columns and that sort of thing and this is what we have here. We have data in a database that I want to display as rows and columns. So we need to build a table. Uh, so we're going to have it call instead of simply alerts and such. We're going to build a table. We're going to call a, another function. So inside, instead of alerts, we will call a function called show table of classes and inside of this table of classes in the parentheses this is where we'll have result dot rows show table of classes. Now this is not uh, a pouch command or a jQuery command or a uh, JavaScript command. This is a function that we will invent because we're going to define how does that table look. So our show classes is just basically this, but the real visual aspect of it will be show table of classes. So outside of this function Outside of the show classes, this would be line 73. I'm going to create a new function. Open close parentheses, open close curly brace. We're going to define what the show classes actually mean. What does it do? Exactly. That's what this is going to do. Show everything we have in a nice format. One thing we have to do here is, well, we we are uh, we're capturing data in the sense that either we have an error or we have a result. And that result, then we're passing it into show table of classes right here. So we need to account for that here in our function where we're actually inventing it. So inside of those parentheses, we can write anything we want there. I'll just call it data. This is the definition of the function. This is us actually using it. And in this instance of this function, we're putting in result.rows. And that's just data. Data that we're putting into the function so we can show it on screen as a nice table. And so, 
The way we'll do this inside of the table, we will create a variable dollar div equals, we're creating a variable called div, and we're going to do it via jQuery. Remember, that's what the little dollar means. So inside of, or after the equals, we've got dollar again, open, close, um, parentheses. And inside of the parentheses and quotes, we've got the ID, which we called the result. Semicolon. And just to confirm, we have the result. Yes. So we've got a back on line 19, we've got a div placeholder called the result. And then down here in show table of classes, we're creating a variable as a reference. We're, we're going to use that div that's on the screen. So we're going to use it as that shorthand right there, dollar $div. Next line, create another variable. This one is not a jQuery variable. We don't need to do the dollar then. We'll just call it str string. We did something like this before where we're, where we're, where we're building a string we're building, um, we're building some HTML code together, and then we're going to show it on screen. So equals, just to, uh, just to see if we're on the right track here, we'll say data, semicolon. Data, where did data come from? Data came from right here, which is this. Object, object, object. Remember that? This is shorthand for object, object, object. Show me all the rows. I passed it in here, data. So I'm saying, okay, into the string, let's put all that data. And then we're going to display this string in that div. Next line. Dollar div dot HTML. And str. So we've got that div placeholder on screen, and we're going to change its HTML. We're going to put um, this data, which we're storing in the string, because this is going to be a complex string. Right now it's very basic, but we're going to make a table. It's not a table yet. I just want to see if this, t if this data, this raw data, gets put into the div. Uh, at this point, let's check our code, save it, and run it. It still won't look just yet correct, but we're building toward it. Let's see. So all we all you have to do is show, oh, show classes. So does that work for anyone? No. Okay. Um, let's maybe, maybe at a screen, maybe we have to add the name, the plus sign, something 
because it's the we saw the roads it's like uh, the, the, maybe there's more than one road there we might have to keep appending the thing to the string we will do that we will do plus equals very soon right now I'm just trying to have it show that whole object 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 yeah. but I might just have my syntax off a little bit let me try something I'm about to take a break anyway just to confirm this let me just see. At the very least here, it should show string. So it is doing that. What am I missing here? Well, perfect time for a break. So um, seven. it's 712. You have to define the table size? We're not there yet. I'm just trying to kind of throw the, the raw data on screen. We will define the data right after the break. I wanted to see if we can just put object, it, it, expecting it to show object, 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 which it's not. But... Um, let's take a break. Let me take a quick look at this and then we'll come back. 7.12, we'll be back at 7.22 and we'll go on.